Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder. I'm joined by Corey Pearsall from Birch Barrel. I'm here at the Birch Barrel HQ, and I'm gonna do something that I've never done before. I'm cooking a brisket on a Birch Barrel. So to do this experiment today, I have a brisket from Better Fed Beef, really high quality stuff. So I know that if this goes bad, it's gonna be on me. It's not the fault of the brisket, it's not the fault of the birch barrel. So I like to season it very simply. You know, I'm a salt and pepper guy, so we're gonna do salt and pepper. And I wanna do something simple because I wanna see the flavor that the birch barrel imparts. The flavor that I love so much when I'm doing direct heat grilling, I wanna see what it does for low and slow barbecue like this brisket. A lot of people like to use a binder to put their rub on. If the brisket is tacky enough, I don't use a binder. This one came out of the package, it's trimmed, it's starting to warm up, so it's nice and tacky. The rub is gonna stick just fine. If you wanna use mustard, it doesn't hurt anything at all, but I don't like to use mustard. Normally, I would kinda of trim off this fat on the meat side, but because we're gonna be doing more direct heat style of cooking today, that fat's just gonna render and make more flavor as it falls into the coals, and it's gonna protect the meat side, so we're gonna leave all that on as a layer of protection. Because I've never done this before, I decided to bring in a ringer. I needed somebody to help me go through this process who's done it before. And so Corey works at Birch Barrel. He's a great cook and an even better guy. So he's the perfect guy to walk me through this process. Now I've wanted to do this direct heat brisket for a long time because the flavor profiles that I love so much while grilling, I wanna see what it does for a low and slow cook on a brisket. And Corey, you've done this a few times. So how do you like to set up the fire? How do you like to operate the cook? So I like to first start season it like you've done and then transfer it to the barrel cold. Okay. And then I lift it up as far away as I can, start a fire, burn down wood, whatever that wood's gonna be, into my coals, and then I'll supplement with lump coal. Now at about 110 degrees internal temperature, I flip it. Okay. That's gonna give me a little bit more fat smoke. I think you were telling me that really uh, bark is, Im it's important to consider bark all the way up to 145, one 145, 150, so I think that's a really smart play on your part because it's gonna absorb the most smoke and the most flavor when it's cold. And so by separating it that far from the fire, you gently bring it up in temperature and it allows that bark to form on the outside. And then most importantly, the flavor. Yes. Yeah, and with brisket, low and slow works because you're trying to break down all that connective tissue. If you try to force it and move it too quickly, it doesn't work out well, at least it hasn't for me. But this is gonna give us an opportunity to do it in a completely different way. It's gonna be a new experience for me and I'm excited to get started. So we can put this guy on. Do you go fat side up or fat side down to start? I go fat side up to okay. start. At a 110, I flip it to fat side down and then right around the stall, so probably around 155, 160, ideally before the stall, I flip it back over. Okay. And then I may increase that temperature. So I wanna hold it around 200. Because of the direct heat, I do wanna go with a lower ambient temperature versus maybe an offset. Sure. You might go a little bit hotter. Yep. But with direct heat, you wanna keep that intensity down. So uh, at the stall, I might bump it up to about 225 to 250. But for the Got most it. part, I wanna keep it to around 200 to 225. Right, and we can use this fat cap to protect the brisket, to render that fat down so each bite is really delicious. And then finally, for fat smoke flavor. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Huh, like a glove. Okay, we got our brisket on now and we're gonna wanna separate it from where we're gonna build the fire. So you take it all the way up? I do. All right, what does that look like? Okay, so pistol grip, drop down the lid, pick up the grate, all the way removed. We have several feet of space between where this fire is gonna be and where the meat is, so we have a lot of protection. So the pistol grip and lid allow you to move the meat low or high depending on your heat needs. And one thing that I think people don't really talk enough about is the utility of the lid, not just to move the meat up and down, but to trap heat and smoke inside. So you're cooking the top side and the bottom side. So unlike a Santa Maria grill, where all that smoke and flavor just wafts away, you trap it in here and so you get use out of it, whereas otherwise it would just go make your neighbors really hungry. Yes. All right, guys, we have been cooking this thing for about six hours now and the aroma is incredible. I took a walk around the building when it got some water. I was walking back and the aroma hit me in the face and I was like, dude, that smells so, so good. So I wish you guys had smell-o-vision because if you did, your tongues would be like beating your brains out right now. You wanna try this brisket. So we're gonna take our first look because we've been patient. We've been waiting to take a look and Corey's been kind of manning the fire because he's done this before. So how have we been running this fire? I know we've been using wood the whole time. We're getting lots of wood smoke. I can smell the fat smoke. So we have those two layers of smoke flavor. How have you been doing it? So uh, trying to keep it around 200 to 225 for as long as possible, trying to mitigate my flame. Yep. Uh, when you're cooking direct heat or with direct heat, fire is gonna do some damage. So you wanna stay with a lower ambient temperature and you really wanna try to keep that fire down. So that's why we started with it up. 
burnt that down to coals to try to manage a very low flame, if no flame at all. Once that burns through, what I do is I supplement with lump coal. Oh, uh, okay. Lump charcoal. Yep, yep. So we kind of almost shift from wood smoke up front to okay. fat smoke to finish it off. Oh, so you have both. Yes. Okay, so yeah. it's not really simultaneous. It's We put on wood smoke first, and then as it cooks, as that fat renders down and starts to drip, we get the smoke flavor of the fat burning on the coals. Yeah, well, I would say you get both yeah. the entire time because oh, there's no okay. heat deflector. It's not offset. So that fat is always dripping down into those coals, whether there's a fire or just coals. Okay, right? so a greater complexity than just wood smoke. Yes, yeah, yeah. Kind of a combo up front, finishing it with fat smoke. Got it. Yeah. Well, if the smell is any indication of how this is going to taste, it's going to be incredible. But let's take our first look. And then at this point, you've been temping it. It's about time to wrap, right? It is. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, right around 180. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take it off and then we're going to wrap it up in some butcher paper. So looking at this brisket, we have really nice bark everywhere. There's a part here that looks kind of blonde, yep. but this is where the fat is kind of crisped up like bacon. Mm -hmm. So where it has that texture of crispy bacon, I've never had that on a brisket, but I'm really excited to try it. So that in combination with the smoke from the wood, the smoke from the fat, and then this extra fat that we're adding, I think this is going to be really, really tasty. So let's wrap it up. We'll put it back on, get it to tenderness, and then we get to enjoy. Sounds great. Okay, so at this point, we have gotten the BTUs into the brisket. It's about 204, 205 in some places. So it's time to come off and rest. And ideally, you'd rest it in the cooler. It'd be something like eight hours. You can go even longer if you have a warming oven, something like that. But eight to 12 hours I've found to be ideal. So we're gonna take this off. We're gonna set it on the cutting board and let it gently come down in temperature. So, Corey, would you do the honors? I will. See the grease strip out of it? Yes. So you know you've done it right when the butcher paper is soaked in rendered fat. That tells you that there's gonna be a lot of rendered fat on the outside of that brisket, which is exactly what we want, so we get that juiciness in each and every bite. Okay, Corey, I have eaten a lot of briskets. I've cooked a lot of briskets. This is the most excited I've been to try one in a long time awesome. because it's cooked in a completely different way. So what do you say we slice off a couple pieces, give it a taste, and we can talk about the flavor that we get with this method of cooking versus what I'm used to, which is traditional offset stuff. Let's do it. Okay. Hold on. We're going we're gonna to try a slice, and then we're going to okay. try an end cut. Okay. Because the end cut is where all the flavor accumulates. So you know what kind of flavor you put on that brisket. And we have a smoke ring right here. We have beautifully rendered fat. It's nice and yellow. The biggest difference between a brisket that's been expertly cooked and one that has been cooked by somebody who maybe doesn't quite know what they're doing is that the fat is rendered properly. So that period of time where the fat was facing the fire, you really render it down, you build that fat smoke, also has the effect of rendering the fat. So it becomes like a translucent yellow and then it just melts into each and every bite. You're not chewing on unrendered fat. So I'm not gonna wait any longer. I'm gonna try this right now. Looks really good, man. The tenderness and juiciness that I'm familiar with when a brisket is great is there, but the flavor profile is significantly different. It almost tastes sweet. I think it's from all that fat smoke falling into the coals, giving you that flavor. Um, it, there's no sugar in this. We just put salt and pepper on it, but it tastes sweet. I've always said fat smoke is very sweet, very savory. It's a different aromatic than like an earthy wood, wood tone. Wow. And the texture on the outside that you were able to get is great too. So when we wrapped it, it brought it back, but it's just the right level. That was pretty incredible, man. Good. I'm gonna have to do this on my own and figure out whatever kind of witchcraft you use to get that kind of flavor on a piece of meat that I've eaten hundreds of times, but never gotten this kind of flavor. So this is really cool. If you guys haven't given it a shot, give it a try. Okay, you can manage the heat with the height of the grate above the fire and you can get flavor that you're not gonna impart by any other means.